And when we look into this media, multimedia, uh, not multimedia, into the media space, social media, etc., <clears throat> we see these glorious numbers about, you know, there's actually 220 million now on MySpace. But at the end of the day, what really counts is the trust relationships you have. All these millions of users and these millions of networks just doesn't really actually do it. I have a large network on LinkedIn. I have a pretty okay network on Facebook. I have a couple network kind of connections on other systems. But what brought me here are my trusted connections. The 150 people who actually voted for me, some of, of them are on LinkedIn, some of them are on Facebook. When I posted it on Facebook, the response were next to nothing. But when I send handmade emails to my connections, these were the guys who actually voted. And so all this social media type business has to be always in correlation with actually what you want to do. If you want to have a long list of connections, say, hey, I have 1,500 connections, that's good. But if you want to do business with these people, that's a different story. So let me ask you, who trusts advertising, you know, the banners and everything, when they say this is what the product is about and this is what that is about, who trusts that information? Oh, that's not a lot. Who like, if you get cold calls, you know, hi, my name is John, I'm calling you on behalf of company XYZ, can I talk to your director of purchase and so on? Who likes these kind of calls? One? Okay. How okay. many calls have a girl, huh? He's lonely. <laughs> so, um, if you're getting, uh, you know, emails like, you know, there's new offers, new promotions and so on, who keeps these emails, actually reads through these emails, and kind of interesting, <laughs> interesting, nobody. So who of you, when you buy a new product, actually first starts talking to friends, look up in the internet, the internet, looking up forums, groups, and get information there? Who's doing that? Okay, pretty much everybody. So here's an interesting situation, and this has happened in the last five years. And pretty much nobody really got aware of this. Our whole business world has changed as dramatically as 250 years ago when industrialization came out. You all just said, I don't give a shit about advertising, I don't give a shit about these emails, and I don't do the cold calling. But when you look into companies, into your own companies, what you do to generate new leads, cold calling, email shots, advertising. You don't have an alternative. And that's the biggest problem we have in our business world today. So why don't we do this? What you're doing anyway, going into forums, checking with friends, do all this, do this in the context of your company. Wouldn't it be nice if you're looking for a product and the first thing that sales guy tells you, you know what, may I introduce you to a couple of our customers, let them tell you what they think about our product before I even talk to you. Would you like that? Would that be positive? If you look into the internet and find forums and groups and associations with those companies and with those businesses you're in, would that be nice? Right? So this has nothing to do with the traditional, quote unquote, traditional social networking where you have millions of contacts. So what Zika is providing is an environment for customers, for our customers and their companies to actually build these environments. We call this build a better business experience for your customers, your partners, and even your suppliers. Build a way, an infrastructure, where you can let your customers and your prospects talk amongst each other. Driving that conversation, you're doing anyway. Facilitate the dialogue. That's what people want. If you look at our website, there's a tiny little video. And I just encourage you to watch it. It is so cool. It is a dialogue between a buyer and a uh, advertiser, and you you you, you got to love. I mean, this is this is just perfect. It, ex ex it describes exactly the situation where we are in right now. So what we do as a company is build this infrastructure, very similar to what Chris just said. We are actually the online guys, and we're focusing on that spot, and we help companies to build that better business experience. And instead of throwing another million or billion into advertising, it's actually a trillion which is spent on advertising. Can you imagine? There's a trillion dollar every year spent on that stuff 
and you all just said, I'm not interested. Can you imagine that all these major industries spend a trillion dollars to win you, to be attracted for you, and you say, I'm a give shit. Can you imagine what does that do to Google in the next couple of years? You know, we all feel still Google is a search engine company, but we all know Google is an advertising company. It's the largest advertising company in the world, with 300 and something billion, a billion actually in valuation, does something which we all don't care about. If I send an email to a couple friends about my new sailboat, guess what? I get all the, the banner advertising, it's all of a sudden all about sailboat, because they scan all the time and they have been scanned. So we as consumers, as buyers of the corporate and also on the consuming side, we want to make that change. That change similar to the industrialization in 250 years ago. So we built that platform and we don't do this on advertising. We have a subscription model and companies pay between $49 all the way up to $2,000 a month per community, depending on the size of the community depending on what kind of community functionality they want, in order to help their customers to better communicate amongst each other and to that company. And with this non-advertising model, where we were very, very frightened in, in the beginning when we started the company, we thought, well, that will be tough because everything is for free. But we realized that most of the companies also realize there is no for free. No for free whatever. You pay one way or the other. But in this case, you get actually an application you run, and you help brand it, but you don't confrontate your customers with marketing bullshit from day one. You may do this later on, but you will also realize pretty quickly, this is a much nicer dialogue for the customer. So we started the company in January 2007. We were hoping to launch the company in November, and like everybody else, lots of delays, lots of other things. So we finally got ready in uh, April this year. Actually, eight weeks ago, we launched our first uh, community. Uh, in the meantime, we built 27 communities. Uh, we're building about two to three per week right now. Two minutes. Okay. Um, the nicest thing about these communities is when, when we launch one community for one customer, they invite their customers. Each of them are companies. Each of the participants are actually new community, potential community members. Uh, I was almost not be able to come today because we had one company who actually was a customer of a customer and said, no, I am part of this community. This is so cool, I want this for my business. So it's actually repeating itself. The greatest thing for us, we don't have a sales force. We don't even plan to have a sales force because our customers are advocates for us. We live the model we're preaching, and if that works, and it seems to work, I mean, since three weeks, 27 communities, it's pretty cool for a startup company. It works because people feel good about the conversation with somebody else and help us bring this information basically to their other customers. So our entire resources go basically straight into engineering to build more functionality, to make it more robust, to make it scalable, all these kind of things. So that's what Zico is about. Uh, feel free to join the community. It's for free for everybody. It will be for free. And there's no advertising on it. The only people who pay are actually the people who run those communities. Um, with this advertising story, I think I want to leave you with one thing. Like, you know, uh, you leave here and say, okay, what do you want to tell your, your, your friends? Maybe not necessarily the story about Zico, but think about what the next big internet, uh, not internet, what the next big financial bubble will be. It will be advertising. It will be these companies who spend $250 million and get another advertising network. This will explode because it has to. Because you all said you're not interested. And the companies who run ads are more frightened than ever that the result, their ROI is next to nothing. The lead quality is so shitty that they just continue to do this because there is no alternative. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey now. That's it. That's it. Good luck. Good luck.